All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Durham. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 109, Electric Fields Inside the Great Pyramid, part two. And today I will be providing evidence for my hypothesis as presented in episode 106, that the Great Pyramid was intentionally left without a capstone to facilitate the accumulation of an electric field, which provided the ideal target for being struck by lightning. If this is a type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing chemistry and physics and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section for exclusive research related content and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Link in the video description below. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget to check out our two newest channels here on YouTube, Egypt Eats for food reviews and Egyptian Trash Cats for our adventures caring for our Egyptian street cat family. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And for anyone that's interested in coming to Egypt to see the pyramids for yourself, the 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour is on and bookings are now available. For a taste of what you can expect during this life-changing adventure experience, check out the tour promo video that dropped last week and if you want to join, please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com with the subject line 2024 Egypt Tour, and I will send you the full tour itinerary and pricing details. Thank you all so much, and I will see you soon here in Egypt. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And to begin, in last week's episode discussing this paper, Electromagnetic Properties of the Great Pyramid, First Multipole Resonances and Energy Concentration. I intentionally left out one of the results that were discovered in this series of experiments, which you can see here, as it is so important that it deserves its own episode and provides conclusive evidence for my hypothesis as presented in episode 106, that the Great Pyramid never had a capstone, allowing the accumulation of an electric field at the top of the structure, providing a target for lightning strikes. So now let me explain exactly what you are seeing in this image. So recall from episode 106 that telluric currents, natural electric currents flowing in the Earth's crust and mantle, known as terra levis or shallow earth currents, quote, have a controlling impact on the strike locations of cloud to ground lightning. And remember this statement as I will be coming back to it at the end of the video, that these natural electric currents have a controlling impact on the strike locations of cloud to ground lightning. Basically, that these electric fields accumulate charges on the surface of the Earth that attract lightning strikes of opposite polarity from cumulonimbus clouds. And I hypothesized that the limestone dielectric material composing the body of the Great Pyramid would create electric polarization within the stone structure, creating a positive electric field distribution near the apex of the structure. So now I'm going to show you how this study provides conclusive experimental research based evidence that proves not only my hypothesis on this mechanism of operation, but also my proposition that the Great Pyramid never had a capstone. 
So recall this experiment from the study where the electromagnetic energy in the form of radio waves were directed into the body of the pyramid as shown here in the direction of vector K. Exactly as would occur with the naturally occurring telluric currents flowing up to the surface through the Giza Plateau into the Great Pyramid. And you can see here that at the lowest frequency wavelength of 230 meters, an absolutely spectacular phenomenon occurs where a tremendous electric field accumulates near the top of the structure. But the area where this hypothetical quote unquote capstone would be is completely unaffected, leaving a flat, exposed surface that is teeming with an electric field at the top of the structure, as shown here on the top right in diagram D. And this is what it looks like. Clear as day, you can see exactly what I hypothesized and explained in episode 106, being proven by experimental research that the dielectric limestone material of the Great Pyramid and its geometry create the accumulation of an electric field at the top of the structure. So just look at the diagram here, where the red indicates the most intense concentration of the electric field. And the area where this quote unquote capstone would be is almost completely unaffected, which is why the Great Pyramid of Giza was intentionally designed to be flat at the top, to allow the accumulation of these electric fields, which are known, again, to have a controlling impact on the location of cloud to ground lightning strikes, as empirically proven in the paper that I showed at the beginning of episode. And these electric fields build up on the top of the structure, providing a target for cloud to ground lightning strikes directly into the top of the pyramid, exactly as I presented in episode 106. But this is just the beginning of the evidence for my theories that were demonstrated in the experiments from this paper. And in part three of this series, electric fields inside the Great Pyramid, I will show exactly how these electric fields directly impact the chemical reaction process within the structure for the production of a dilute solution of sulfuric acid that was utilized for the acidic leach mining of metallic ore deposits on the Giza Plateau. But also recall that the production of sulfuric acid is an extremely exothermic reaction the heat energy from which has a direct application in the generation of more cumulonimbus clouds. This is a continuous cloud and lightning creating circuit, just as described with the Chalk Hills of Wiltshire and Silvery Hill, but with a more complex mechanism of operation, indicating the evolution from the chalk mound and hill structures of England and Ireland into the chemical reaction chambers of the Egyptian pyramids. Hopefully now I have your attention, so please subscribe and stay tuned for more of this ancient technology based in physics and chemistry exclusively here on the land of chem. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 109, Electric Fields Inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, part two. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and in this week's Sunday site visit, it is with great pleasure that I can finally present to you exclusive Land of Chem footage from one of my favorite ancient structures on the planet, Newgrange. This is an episode that you do not want to miss, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube if you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section for exclusive research and unreleased footage. Link in the video description below. If you want to pick up a copy of the book, 
or grab some merch. Check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, go check out our two new channels here on YouTube, Egypt Eats for food reviews and my personal favorite, Egyptian Trash Cats for our adventures caring for our Egyptian street cat family, now 15 strong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.